Hi, probably one of the most, if not the most out of context passages from the scriptures is Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It's the passage that talks about the plans God has for good and not for calamity. It's used many times in gospel presentations or just in sermons, but it's taken totally out of context. Watch this short video and you'll never use the passage for that purpose again. And at the end of the video, I will share part of the context which will make you never even want that passage to apply to you. As I said, in order to understand this passage, we need to look at the context. Look at who it is written to and in what circumstances. Read verse 4 of Jeremiah 29. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. So it is written to a group of folks taken into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. Who are they? Well, the southern kingdom of the nation of Israel, consisting of Judah, Benjamin, and some Levites. They had rebelled against God. They had even sacrificed their children into the fire to Baal to give themselves a larger crop. Now, God had given a law that every seven years, the land had to have a year of Sabbath rest. For 490 years, they didn't do that. So the land lacked 490 divided by 7, 70 years of rest. God punished the nation of Israel in that they had to be in Babylon for 70 years. Look at 2 Chronicles 36 verse 21 for that. It's kind of like getting a life sentence in jail. So what are the instructions to these people in captivity? Verse 5 tells them to settle in. They're going to have to be there for a while. Verse 6 tells them to match their children up for marriage. I've actually thrown this out to teenagers who claimed verse 11 for themselves. All of a sudden they were far less interested. Verse 7 tells us to pray for their local governments for peace. My parents were occupied by the Germans in Holland during World War II. It was not easy. As a matter of fact, it was a dreadful experience. My dad was hunted by the Germans to work in their factories, and my mother's house was totally bombed away. Not exactly a blast. I own the only thing that survived the bombing. Verse 8 and 9 gives them instruction to not listen to false prophets and teachers because they prophesy falsely. In other words, very bad doctrine. Verse 10, it looks up a bit. After 70 years, you will return. So I think it's clear here that the you is not some individual, but you as a nation. And probably the ones hearing this will be most likely dead or very, very old. You might not even feel like going back at that age. There is no ARP. Now we have verse 11. Are you still excited about the prospects? God has plans for you, you. Who's the you again? The nation of Israel as a whole, which in this context refers to probably the kids of the children of the kids that you have matched up together. Those are the beneficiaries. So even though the nation of Israel had to rebel against God, he was not going to destroy it as a nation, but had plans for that nation, plans for welfare and not for calamity. Then they will seek the Lord, according to verse 12. Now, on why you don't want this passage to apply to you. What's going to happen to, at that time, the current nation of Israel? Three things. The sword, the famine, and the pestilence. Now the sword, that could hurt. Famine, especially difficult for folks with a sweet tooth. The third, pestilence. I've never understood that word as well as the last year and a half with COVID. Thank you very much, but I can do without that. So this is not talking about the prosperity gospel, how to get saved now, or some great amount of physical abundance that you might have in this life. It's instructions to the nation of Israel during their time in Babylon. So what do we want to talk about? How to improve our lives here on earth? Our message is all about Jesus Christ and his atonement for us on the cross. See, all of us have sinned. We must be perfect to go to heaven, so we'll never be good enough. 
Jesus took our sin, our shame, our guilt, and our punishment. He died on the cross and rose from the dead. He said that if you trust him as Savior, you have eternal life. So it's not about a rosy life here on earth. Now, if you want to know more, you want to watch this video right here. Then, STLB or smash the like button on both videos and share them with others. God bless you. Bye-bye.